I'll tell you what, you mentioned mentioned a lot of uh, great players. You did the great Dobro sessions where you had a lot of these folks. How did that album come about? Uh, I had been talking about doing something like that because, and, and, and Tut Taylor, uh, had, uh, had the same idea. We had the same idea at the same time because we had, uh, uh, Josh Graves, um, bashful brother Oswald and Tut were all in their late seventies, early eighties. And, and I thought, well, this is a snapshot of Dobro playing, uh, to this, to this time, to this period. And, any any dobro record that's going to come after this that has multiple dobro players on it is not going to have those guys you know so i want to do this while you know give me my roses while i'm living you know for them and it was beautiful because i started with uh oz uh, bashful brother oswald who played with roy acup on the grand Ole opry he was uh in the most frail condition of everybody and so I started with him and got him finished. And I figured, well, okay, he's done his part. He'll be happy to just, you know, go ahead and go on and let everybody do their thing. But he came back every day. Wow. He came back every day just to be with fellow Dobro players, you know, people who spoke his language. And Josh was the same way. So the whole the whole control room was just full of Dobro players, you know. Mm-hmm. Debris, we call it. <laughs> and um and everybody, you know, Sally Van Meter and we and, we, and uh, Rob Ike, Stacy, uh, there are all these people. But you know what? I I told Rob the other day. I said, of of those ten Dobro players, I said we'll get Tut and I decided we'll get ten Dobro players, each do two songs, twenty songs. That's a lot of that's a lot of songs. That's a lot of Dobro music. <laughs> and uh, but it won a Grammy. You know, it won a Grammy. It won everything at the IBMA. It except female vocalist, you know, it, it, it did, it did, it served well, you know, and, and, and I'll, and I'll also say, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't done for that reason to win awards. It was done because in homage, you know, right. Of it was a passion project. The younger, oh, totally, totally. I said in there, Rob told me the other day, he said, he said he went back to get something after the last session. And he said, I was asleep on a baffle. One, you know, a, a studio baffle that separates people from each other, you know, keeps the music from bleeding into a microphones. He said he went back to tell me something and I was asleep on a baffle in a, in one of the, in one of the rooms. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was worn out. Man. Was so, uh, but, but of those, of those, all those Dobro players on that record, only, uh, only Rob, Sally Van Meter and I are still here. Uh, Curtis Birch is still here, but he, he, because of some chemo that he had to do, he can't touch metal mm. and, uh, which is a tragedy as, uh, Curtis is one of my favorite all time Dobro players. And, and he played with Newgrass revival back in the day and they, Sam would go, it's Dobro time. And then, and, and Curtis would come out and play like Randy Lynn rag or something like that. That was a Josh Graves song. He was, he was. You know, he Josh was everybody's hero, and he played mm-hmm. that. And the whole place would go nuts, and I was just so happy because here's this hippie band on stage, and I'm ten years old, and they're playing what I want to hear. Uh huh. It, it completed the picture for me. Yeah. But that record record did great, and there have been other records, you know, collections of Dobro players, but uh, none of them are going to have Mike Aldridge and Stacy Phillips and Gene Wooten and and Tut Taylor and Josh Graves and, and uh, Bashful Brother Oswald, those guys are all gone. Yeah. And so we can't, we won't hear that again. And then that's it. But it was, like I say, just a snapshot of what the instrument, where it was at that point. Yeah. Well, you had your version of Birdland on that. <laughs> yeah, I stretched it a little. Um, but that was one of the, you know, I wanted everybody, I didn't want everybody to just play the same kind of music. You know, right. I said, you know, go ahead and stretch out. Gene Wooten said, I'm going to do, uh, he, he did a Beatles song. Uh, Day Tripper. He did Day Tripper. I said, if you don't do it, you don't have a, you know. <laughs> and, and he did it. And I was just in the studio jumping up and down because I that that just gave me the greatest pleasure to hear him do something like that. And everybody was playing. Uh, uh, Mike Aldridge was playing eight string dobro and playing swing tunes you know and 
it was crazy. And Oz, Oz did what he did. Josh did what he did. And we could have all just played that, mm -hmm. but it would have been, why would we do that when we got Josh Graves there to do that? You know, there you so go. It was like, everybody show your strength and, and see, and show, show where you know you are you stand with different genres of music on this on this record so it's a mixed bag but it's all great players you know yeah. and some most that aren't here anymore 